Thank you, Dr. Selis. Your Eminence, Cardinal Tuxum, uh, Honorable Commissioner Gabriel, fellow academicians, president, colleagues, thank you very much for, for being here today. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Weiderpass, the director of the International Agency for Research on Cancer, uh, and we are located at, in Lyon, France. I would like first like to thank Dr. Ulrich Ringborg, the Secretary General of the European Academy of Cancer Sciences for inviting me on behalf of the Pontificial Academy of Sciences and the European Academy of Cancer Sciences to give these lectures in our important conferences on strategies to decrease inequalities in cancer therapeutics and cancer prevention. And I'm going to speak exactly about that, inequalities in cancer care and prevention today. Can I have the next slide, please? So just before I start working then, uh, to remind you what is IARC, and we are the specialized cancer research agency of the World Health Organization. We were established in 1965 uh, by seven countries, and we expanded throughout the years to 27 participating states, reinforcing our international collaboration. Our main objective is to promote international collaboration in cancer research. A significant feature of IARC is its expertise in coordinating research across countries and organizations. The agency has a particular interest in conducting research in low and middle income countries through partnerships and collaboration with research in these regions. Over the course of this century, cancer will become the leading cause of premature death worldwide and the single most important barrier to further gains in life expectancy. According to IARC estimates, in 2020, there were 19.3 million new cancer cases and almost 10 million cancer deaths worldwide. Cancer does not affect the world population uniformly. The figure in this slide presents the distribution of all cancer incidence and mortality according to the world regional region for both sexes combined. One half of all cases and 58% and of deaths occurred in Asia, where about 60% of the global population resides. Europe accounts for 22% of the total cancer cases and about 20% of all cancer deaths, although it represents only 9.7% of the global population. So Europe is particularly affected by cancer. Europe is followed by the Americas with 20.9% of incidence and 40.2% of mortality globally. And Africa accounts for 5.7% of total cases and 7.2% of cancer deaths. So deaths in Africa are much higher proportionally than elsewhere as compared to the incidence cases. Compared to the Americas and Europe, Asia and Africa, the share of new cancer cases is about 55% and cancer deaths 65% are much higher because the different distribution of cancer types and higher fatality rates in these regions. So we observe here the global diversity in cancer types by sex. In men, prostate cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer in 112 countries, followed by lung cancer in 36 countries and colorectal and liver cancer in 11 countries each. In women, the second uh, map, breast cancer is the most frequently diagnosed cancer globally, is in pink in the slide, 159 countries, breast cancer is number one, followed by cervical cancer, in orange in the graph in 23 countries. We observe also a global diversity in mortality by sex. In men, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer death in 93 cancer, countries, in part because of its high fatality rate, followed by prostate cancer in 48 countries and liver cancer in 23 countries. 
The mortality profile in women is more heterogeneous, with, with breast and cervical cancers being the leading causes of death in 110 and 36 countries, respectively, followed by lung cancer in 25 counties. Globally, the total number of cancer cases is expected to increase from 90.3 million in 2020 to 30.2 million in 2040. We assess the expected number of new cancer cases in 2040 according to the Human Development Index, or HDA, with a broader marker of inequality and cancer transition between countries. This HDA, Human Development Index, is a United Nations Development Program composite indicator, including measures of access to education, a long and healthy life, and a decent standard of living. In summary, the HDI provides a useful framework to map out the continuing transition in cancer globally and highlights the clear reality of increasing inequalities between countries. The greatest increase are predicted in lower resource countries, currently assigned a low human development index countries undergoing major social, economic, and demographic transitions. Such inequalities can only be expected to grow unless resource-dependent, effective, and cost-effective interventions are urgently implemented. In particular, vaccination will be a key preventive strategy in low human development index settings, given the high burden of infection-related cancers. Tobacco control is another main priority for cancer control in transitioning countries given that the number of smokers is projected to increase in these countries. And finally, as social and economic transition increases, the prevalence of sedentary jobs, urban living, and high caloric intake, an opportunity for prevention exists for less developed countries to av avoid no adverse lifestyle risk factors, such as obesity, limited physical activity, high alcohol intake, which cause many of the cancers commonly seen in most developing countries. In terms of global mortality, the number of cancer deaths is expected to rise from 10 million in 2020 to 16.3 million by 2040. The greatest increases are predicted in countries currently assigned a low human development index, the poorest countries. Access to appropriate, affordable, and equitable treatment will also be crucial in lower human development index settings, especially as the current availability of essential cancer medicines, cancer surgery, and radiotherapy facilities are sparse. So what is the situation with uh, breast cancer? By 2040, the number of newly diagnosed breast cancers, the number one cancer type in the world among female and actually among both sex combined as well, N breast cancer is now number one. It is still projected to go by 40% to about 3 million cases every year. Similarly, deaths from breast cancer are set to increase by more than 50% in the same period. A particularly large, relatively increase will be seen in transitioning countries, especially low human development index countries, where the number of new cases and deaths is expected to double by 2040. While in 2020, 80.4% of new breast cancer cases and 30% of deaths occurred in transitioning countries, by 40, uh, 2040, it will rise to 22% and 35%, respectively. The projection is solely due to the growth and aging of the population and may be further modified by changing in incidence rates. IARC leads the African Breast Cancer Study Disparities and Outcomes, the ABCDO, on breast cancer survival across five countries in sub-Saharan Africa, and the quantification of how to improve breast cancer survival, which will inform the WHO Global Initiative on Breast Cancer, is based upon. 
This study identifies priorities, priority areas for intervention across the breast cancer journey in sub-Saharan Africa. IARC estimated the global, regional, and country-specific number of new and existing maternal orphans due to cancer in 2020 based on the IARC global can data on global fertility estimates. A staggering one million children became maternal orphans in that year. Most of these children were in Asia and Africa. By no coincidence, deaths from breast cancer and cervical cancer, the two female cancers targeted by the World Health Organization initiatives, led to half of maternal orphans. This work further illustrates yet another reason for global action on preventable and premature cancer deaths, which will drive intergenerational cycle of poverty if we don't act upon them. A new study by IARC scientists in collaboration with researchers in the Netherlands and other European countries and the United States investigated socioeconomic inequalities in, cerv in cervical cancer mortality in Europe and elsewhere. And this research fills a major gap in the current knowledge and mapping of socioeconomic inequalities in cancer in European countries by providing a comprehensive and comparative assessment of the magnitude and temporal trends of socioeconomic inequalities in cancer. Cancer-specific mortality data by socioeconomic status as measured by educational level were collected and harmonized in 18 countries displayed in this slide between 1990 and 2015. And uh, the variability in age-adjusted mortality from cervical cancer, as seen is in this plot, is relatively narrow among higher educational groups, with much more of the variability in between country inequalities confined to differences among the lower educational groups. This primarily reflects inequalities in the availability, assess, and update of effective screening programs, which can detect and remove precancerous lesions and choose reduce incidence. The impact of human papillomavirus vaccination is not yet visible in the data. This study shows that socioeconomic inequalities in cancer mortality are large and exist everywhere in Europe for most cancer types. In Europe, about one in three cancer deaths in men and one in six cancer deaths in women were directly associated and explained by educational inequalities. The immediate implication is that the reduction of cancer mortality rates among the most disadvantaged groups is a crucial step to lowering the national average cancer mortality rates and the overall burden of cancer. A substantial fraction of cancer deaths in Europe, about 32% in men and 16% in women overall, and up to 46% in men and 24% in women in the Baltic, Central, and Eastern European countries were associated with educational inequalities. Although general decreases in mortality rates were observed for several cancer types, the trends were consistently less favorable among individuals with lower educational levels. An important finding of this study is that socioeconomic inequalities in cancer mortality are increasing rapidly among women, in particular for lung cancer, as well as some other types of cancer, even in countries with a long-established tradition of equitable welfare and social justice policies, such as the Nordic countries. The most advantaged individuals in societies seem to be relatively protected against cancer mortality, independently on where they live in Europe. However, for the least uh, advantaged individuals, the country of residence is of great importance with respect to cancer mortality. The results of these studies call for a systematic measurement, monitoring, and action on the substantial socioeconomic inequalities in cancer in Europe. So the take-home messages. 
overall cancer incidence and mortality differ markedly between countries according to the Human Development Index as a marker of inequalities and cancer transition between countries. These inequalities can only be expected to grow unless resource-dependent, effective, and cost-effective preventive interventions are implemented. And access to appropriate, affordable, and equitable treatment will also be crucial to lower the burden in human development index countries which are least privileged. And persuading nations worldwide to accelerate resource-appropriate cancer control programs is urgent. And efforts to plan, implement, and evaluate prevention programs must be considered great priorities in low- and middle-income countries. Thank you very much for your attention.